Hey guys, about a month ago, I wanted to jump in and just try to learn how to do 3D modeling. Never, never done it before. I always wanted to try it. I always wanted to give it a shot and uh, make my characters in like a 3D space. So I downloaded Blender and I spent a month in it so far. That's what I'm going to be going over today is the tutorials and uh, the projects that I did in order to get to where I am now a month later. So I have a seasonal job and I'm off during the winter and uh, last month uh, I received a call that said that we would be going back to work in a month. So I thought maybe maybe I should learn something um, uh, and uh, use this time to, to, to gain something new to try to use to create things and stuff like that. I had thought about downloading Unity or uh, Unreal and trying to learn uh, game design. But I decided to go with Blender instead because uh, it just seems like making like interactive art mediums and stuff like that would be a little bit tougher for me since I'm not, I don't consider myself a great storyteller or even I don't know if I could come up with game mechanics and stuff like that. But anyways, I decided to download Blender and I just started going through tutorials and, and checking it out and stuff. But I downloaded Blender and I opened it up and I can't even, I don't even know how to move in this program. But I mean, I, I don't know how to move in 3D space or, or, or anything or even get rid of the cube or whatever. Anyways, I'd like to go through the tutorials and the projects that I did uh, in order to get to where I am a month now. But like I said, I had a whole month of no work. I really just threw myself at this thing. But anyways, the, the first thing that I made was this little bitty frog. Look at that thing. Can you see that? But I made this little frog. Mostly, mostly everything is a, a, a YouTube tutorial that I follow, so. What the heck? So this is a tutorial by Mar, and uh, it's uh, it's not a very long one. It's it's 25 minutes, but it took me like four hours to do. I mean, she goes through it nice and slow. She explains the interface and what add-ons you should have enabled. I just found myself pausing the video after she said to do one thing and then doing that thing and then kind of forgetting halfway through it and then having to rewind and then replay it and stuff. But the 25 minute video took like four hours for me to complete the little bitty frog. There's a Another tutorial that I didn't go through, but I did watch the series, and it gives you a really similar result. It's by Eve Sculpts. Um, instead of making a frog, you're making a bunny. The bunny is in the same type of style, and it's about, looks like the same difficulty. Only she spreads her tutorial over several videos. It's a little bit longer, but she goes a little bit more in depth, and she teaches you a little bit more, uh, including rigging. If you wanted to make your characters, you know, move and make them, make them easier to pose. So if I was starting over, the frog tutorial is a good one, but I would probably do the rabbit tutorial. There's no sculpting or anything. You're just box modeling everything. And by the end of it, um, you'll learn how to do, um, make the character, put the textures on the characters, maybe a little texture painting. But anyways, definitely check out either one or the other. I started with the frog one. You should probably start with the rabbit one. But I mean, I started with frog, so I ended up all right, I guess. Just starting with it. Now, the next one that I did was, I thought, hey, I just made a frog, I can make anything I want now, and I tried to make one of my characters, and uh, this one, well, I guess I don't have to show it, I can just throw it up on the screen. I thought, I made that frog, I can make anything now, so I tried to make my own character, and I started from the ground up, extruding and things like that. It came out super blocky, and it came out looking really weird, and I had a a lot of double vertexes and stuff. When I went to shade smooth it and stuff, it just, oh my gosh, it looked awful. And I didn't know what normals were or anything like that or that you needed to flip them if they're backwards or whatever. Shade smoothing made it look awful. And then I tried to, uh, uh, I looked up a tutorial, I don't remember what tutorial, just to get a tune shader going to maybe make it kind of like a uh, cell shaded look and stuff. It, it was, it was really awful. So I found out that I wasn't ready to go at it alone yet. I still needed more tutorials. I needed to learn a little bit more about what I was doing and why it came out so bad, what I was doing wrong. So what I did next was I found a really cool tutorial by, what is his name? I will tell you. The Observatory. It's, it's, it's a really long series. It took me a week to finish it, just about. I was modeling Link from the Switch game Winks, Winks. <laughs> From the Switch game, Link's Awakening, he gives you these references and shows you how to set them up to where you can kind of block out everything with those references. So, references are super important in, in, in just about everything in 3D modeling. I've come to find out, and I guess it's what everybody says too. I learned a super ton lot out of this one. This is the this is the actual tutorial series that I learned how to uh, rig characters. There's an easier way to set your bones up with an add-on that's already with Blender, but 
in this tutorial ser series, he, he makes you create your own rig, but there's a, there's a Rigify rig that's included in Blender that you can use, and that's what I use now. But, I mean, if you're interested in um, how to box model link and uh, uh, bake some textures, because uh, uh, he goes through all these things. It's how many... Uh, it's six... Actually, I just did the five videos. It's five videos, and each one of them is like 10 minutes long. So that's actually... Like a day each for me, I guess. I was, you'll start off slow, because I was really slow. Like I said, it took me almost a week to do Link. Yeah, it, it took a long time, but when I was done, the renders that I got out of them, I was pretty proud of them. I didn't know, I didn't know anything about lighting or anything like that. But the renders that I, that I, that I came up with after doing all that modeling and texturing and, and rigging and weight painting, which is the worst, I finally had some uh, renders to put out. And I was, I was really excited about it. Here's, here's a few of them. Or if, well, I probably already showed them to you. So I was feeling pretty good about that, and I wanted to get into another thing. And there's this whole other um, section in Blender. See, there's like there's like a whole animation side to Blender. There's a modeling side, and then there's a sculpting side. There's a node side where there's like all these things that connect to other things that make your pictures look pretty, or your whatever your 3D model and stuff. But anyways, I wanted to learn a little bit about sculpting. So I watched this uh, hour-long video called... The only hand sculpting tutorial you will ever need, Blender from Beginner to Pro, by Just Tis Arts. It's a really long video, but it teaches you the basics on sculpting a head. Before I watched that, I did watch some videos on the tools and stuff like that. Nothing in particular, just search for Blender sculpting tools. I'll give you an explanation about them. Because I notice when you hover over the tools, they don't tell you what they do. Yeah, it's really weird. You, you, you hover over the sculpting tool, tools, and they don't tell you what they do. They just tell you the hit uh, they tell you the shortcuts for them. Either watch a video or you'll have to go look them up in order to find out what they are. But really, if you're going to get into sculpting, you're probably going to use two or three brushes and that's it. At least that's what I've found. So yeah, I sculpted a head uh, following that tutorial. And uh, I found out I'm really bad at it. Like, I'm super bad at it. Eyes were way too big. I mean, I already know that while you're sculpting something, it's going to look like an alien, right? But... It just looked really bad when I was done. I wasn't happy with it, but I mean, I didn't stop trying. I kept on trying. Later on, I tried to sculpt some lips. Here's a here's a picture of something I was working on. I was trying to learn about retopology. So I know one thing that you can do is you can put a bunch of your blocks together to build the form of a body, bring it into the sculpt mode, and uh, remesh it in order to join all those things together. And you can smooth things out and get a good shape of a body. And then you can retopologize. You can rebuild the mesh. You got to do it by hand. And uh, that's what I was trying to learn how to do in this picture. I didn't know about, you know, what good geometry is or well, what your edge flow is supposed to look like in order for it to deform right in a rig and stuff. So I was kind of just going at it that way and um, I watched some videos about retopology but I, I think I only paid attention to like how to snap vertices to the sculpt. Realizing that now I should have uh, paid more attention to those videos because so, that, that was kind of a dead end and uh, I dropped this project. So I'm, I'm still trying, I'm practicing sculpting again and the next thing that I did I had drawn some fan art of Ellie from The Last of Us and I was going to try to match that and uh, I took the one picture that I had that I drew of her and I, I stuck it in the back as reference and I used it, blocked everything out and sculpted it together. It came out okay, but the, the lips were really weird looking. It didn't match the thing because I'd just done a lip tutorial. So here I am trying to do like a super cartoony character but put like realistic lips on it. It was, uh, it was pretty bad. The lip tutorial that I did do, uh, here's, some, here's some floating lips. How to Make Sexy Lips by uh, Danny Mac. Next up, I did a really easy tutorial by 3D Greenhorn. It was the isometric bedroom. If you go to like the Blender Reddit, then uh, you'll see a lot of people actually do this one starting out. I was uh, getting a little frustrated with some of the projects that I was doing, so I did this one because it looked easier and it was nice to just fall back and uh, uh, do something that was a little bit easier than these, these character modeling things. I noticed that I'm starting to pause videos less and I can keep up with them without having to rewind and what was that thing I was supposed to do because I'm already figuring out that hey things that I didn't really understand in the beginning I'm starting to catch on already seeing that in the steps like in this bath bedroom I could see what he's getting ready to do and I can go ahead and start doing it while I'm doing it with him so it makes it a little bit easier but in the same day of doing this tutorial I also made Wendy's Repair Shop from my webcomic that I used to do. Man, it was so much easier to do it in Blender and it looks a whole lot better than when I did it in um, SketchUp. 
So just a couple months ago, I tried using SketchUp to make her repair shop in Blender. And I've been using SketchUp because I, I do woodworking and I, I like to make plans in SketchUp. But man, it just looks so much nicer actually having it rendered out and with nice bevels. It's a whole lot easier to build the building that way. So next up, Matt Froze had been uh, promoting his campaign for his makeshift plush of kit. I'd been helping him out a little bit and I drew some things and stuff. Uh, but then I started doing this 3D stuff. He was trying to make one final push to get to the goal. One of the things that I did to help, it was a it was an easy, nice project. But yeah, I actually made a video of it. There's a, a, a link to the, the Twitter post that I have of it. So after I failed at um, making the other character, it was all boxy looking and stuff, I thought I had enough information to uh, actually make one of my characters and do it right this time. So I didn't want to go all the way to, to make Wendy as a 3D character because I, I feel like if I actually, if I made her, then and if it turns out to be crappy, I won't make it. I won't. I won't fix it. So I decided to make her assistant Charlie. So I sculpted her out, and then I retopologized her, textured her, and everything. Watching a lot of tutorials, but there's nothing specific that I can throw at you because I don't remember the tutorials. But I do know that any of the projects that I was doing up until the most recent project, I always had a tutorial out and always had one open specifically to what I was working on. So if I was like sculpting the base model, right? I had a video about sculpting open and then if I was retopologizing I had a video open about what's the best edge flow where do you where do you need to put your loops at there's a, a video on retopology that helped me out a lot pixelica pixelica <laughs> see pixelica cg it's a it's a really informative video and uh, he walks through doing uh, one video is just the face and then another video is the rest of not the face, the body. For doing this one and the next one, I had that video open. So I finished the Charlie model. I did my first turnaround animation, which uh, Eve Sculpt, it's another Eve Sculpt tutorial that I did. It's, it's actually way easier than I thought it was, but animation in general in Blender looks super scary to me. And I, I still, I know I, anything can be keyframed, but I'm not really sure how the keyframes and how the in-betweens work. And how, because I'm, I'm used to like flash and seeing the timeline. In this one, there's a, there's still a timeline, but there's also something called a dope sheet, which I'm not really sure about. And then there's curves. Everything just seems so separated. I'm sure that after I figure it out, it's going to seem super simple. But right now, it just looks, it just looks like I'm, I'm trying to read Russian. But yeah, I did the turnaround and then I put Charlie around the, the repair shop that I just recently modeled. This one turned out really nice. I was really happy about it. What I wasn't happy about was the rigging. I mean, I realize now you can't get rigging perfect. You can't get your weight paints perfect. Eventually, there's certain things you're just gonna have to settle with, and then you're gonna fix those things with shape keys and drivers, which I understand how shape keys work, but I haven't uh, I haven't delved into like how to do drivers and how to actually activate shape keys automatically. Like if your finger bends or whatever, you want this crease to be the way this is and you don't want this to be flat and bent and stuff like that so you can fix those with shape keys and you can set those shape keys to happen automatically with drivers for when this bone bends so far it kicks in that shape key and it actually fixes the way everything looks but like I said I'm in month one so I'm, I'm gonna figure that out later after finishing Charlie I went into work on Wendy I'm, I, I'm not happy with how Wendy turned out though she looks kind of like a clay animation character when I was finished my biggest problem was trying to figure out how the hair works there's no new tutorials that I use to finish her but she did she did turn out all right I am gonna redo her eventually I just I've got to learn some more I also want to learn how to do face rigging too but I'm not sure how big cartoony mouths are supposed to work because everything for face rigging and mouth rigging is normally for like little bitty mouths you know, like human sized mouths, but when you got a character whose mouth get, can get really big and then get super small or whatever, uh, I haven't run across that tutorial yet. Maybe there is a, uh, I think it's Lightning Boy Studio, has one about Booleans. I'm gonna check that one out. Oh, yeah, the first animation, like moving character animation, not just a turntable I did, was uh, of Wendy uh, doing a fighting pose. You can see. <laughs> her hand clipping through her glove, so I didn't do a great job. Now we're coming to the uh, time lapse that's playing in the video. This is um, B. Murphy, Post-Apocalyptica. A couple years ago, I did this drawing where I was making a new character every single day in the month of October, and I think she was uh, October 31st. She was the last one. I decided to do that because I like the pose, 
and I thought it'd be really cool to see this in 3D. But I also ran across this page by Alex Trevino. On his website, he has tutorials on how he went about creating his character scenes and stuff like that. It's not a super in-depth tutorial, but there's little tidbits here and there that are really useful. I really like the way that his models and everything that he does in general, his texturing is really great, especially the Space Cadet workflow tutorial. That's the one that I focused on a lot while I was working on this one. I know that this one didn't turn out to be nearly even close to, to anything he, he can do, but it gave me a lot of inspiration and I had, I had a lot of fun checking that out and um, working on this one. This one took a really long time. This is the longest. I think this one took a week also. And I learned a lot of new things that I hadn't done before, like the particle system in order to make the hair. And I'm sure I went about it all wrong by, by uh, create, see, I created the hair with curves first and then I put the particle system on the curves, which I probably should have just made the scalp, put the hair on the scalp, and then shaped them with the comb. Comb and hair in Blender, long, I guess the long strands, it's just super hard. I guess, I don't know if I was supposed to add more vertices in the hair strings or whatever, but it was it was a bear to, to wrestle all of those down. After this one, the video that you're watching, Say I've had that one recorded for about uh, a week now. I've been wanting to make a video about it. I just didn't know how to go about it. After this one, you'll see the renders of this one uh, at the end of the video. After this one, I went back to sculpting. What I noticed was I, there wasn't any like, I don't know, I was just having a hard time finding a workflow that I liked and stuff. But then um, I really like Danny Mac videos, his tutorials and stuff like that. He has a head modeling course on his website and it's also on Gumro, but it costs like $60. And um, I, I, that I'd been trying to avoid, uh, but I eventually I paid for the course and I took the course that day and I think it took four hours to go through it. And uh, I would highly recommend it because he really holds your hands. He gives you these base models that you can compare your stuff to, that you can shrink wrap to to see how off you are. Goes through every single step in creating a character up into the head finished just the head like not retopology no hair or anything like that just from here to right under the boobas uh, he's also british so he's nice to listen to i took that course i'm actually planning on taking it a few more times if i want to do another stylized head like that just have that playing in the background because i mean the way everything was set up it's super informative i think it was worth 60 dollars just to learn that bit of information i went further and i went ahead and just did the hair because i already knew how to do it i had some textures left over from what you're watching right now so i used those textures and I kind of finished it. I still didn't want to dive into face rigging, so I kind of used the elastic deform to move her into like a smart assy face. It's it, it looks it looks pretty bad looking back at it now. Next up, I made Nat from Hazelnut Hex. That's a game being developed by Chunderfins. So it's a bullet hell game. She was really fun to make, and I feel like this is like the most complete character that I've made, even better than you know the one that we're watching right here. Because I feel like I actually finally got to where I can match at least one of the references that I was going off of. I got it to match what I was shooting for. I didn't have to use like crazy textures to kind of you know fake my way through it or anything. Like, like everything in this. This is just base colors using the regular what comes in, in Blender, picking your colors and stuff like that. But yeah, I was uh, I was really happy about this Nat one. It, I think it worked out really well. Didn't use any tutorials on this one. So what I'm working on right now is a drawing by Carl's Del Mal called Ratatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatat
See ya. Thanks for watching.